Good evening and welcome to We Repair. Uh, it's been a little bit of time since I've recorded a video. Uh, unfortunately, things have been a little bit busy in the world and uh, the difficulty of getting parts at the minute is a bit of a challenge. So, uh, this is a HP Compaq laptop. Um, it does all absolutely work, but there's a little bit of a problem with it. I will see if I can show you um, where some of the keys along this middle row either stick or you can't type at all or you can't press anything or you'll press it once and you've got 50 million of the same letter. Um, so that's just something that is going to be very straightforward to fix. It will just be a very simple keyboard replacement. Um, unfortunately this hasn't really charged in it so I can't actually show that to you but it, it is this middle row that we're having a problem with. So we're just going to do a really quick keyboard replacement on this. Um, so the exact model is a compact Presario CQ56. Very, very simple and straightforward to do. Uh, so as with everything repair-wise, battery out first. The last thing we want to do is cause any damage to this. Um, so the keyboards on these are actually pretty simple to get out. Um, normally they're all marked up with which screws we need to, to undo. There should be a little keyboard symbol around them. You probably won't be able to make it out, but there's one just to here, little keyboard symbol. There's three along the back, and there's usually one or two under these plates. So we'll just start by quickly getting these undone, and then we can have a look and see what's going on. So we've got nothing under there. Oh no, we do, there's one there. Um, so we've got our two round dims, our Wi-Fi card, um, and there's that. I'll just undo this one as well, see if there's any more. Or hopefully won't be. So now we've got nothing more. So let's get these undone. So we'll do this one first. And this one. And this one. These three are normally all the same length and they all do look the same length. The others tend to be a little bit different in size. Usually they're a bit shorter just because of where they're situated. Yeah, they are. And number three. This is probably some different thing. And then hopefully this should now just, in fact, it's already lifting out I'll just turn this over so you can see. So you can just see it's just lifted a little bit already. So under here there's a ribbon cable around here somewhere, so we just need to be careful. You don't want to damage anything. So you know, you'll have enough room that you'll be able to flip the keyboard all the way over. It looks like there's been a little bit of damage or something under this. So we'll do is just flip this over. This little tab here will lift up. Just like that. And then the whole ribbon cable will come out. So there's our existing keyboard. Um, so this is part number 589301-031. Uh, and again, when I buy these, I tend to go and just get them on eBay. They're all pretty generic and similar. Um, set you anything back between 10 and 20 pounds. They're not particularly expensive. Some of them you will find though that you'll have to do the whole of this top plastic. It won't just be the keyboard, but in this case, I've already looked at it, I know what the problem is, I know this keyboard does remove really simply. So that's our old. This is our nice new one, so we'll pop our old one to one side. So again, lie it flat, face down, and you can just move your ribbon cable over. And what you're looking for is if you slide it in, the two little tabs should just go, so I'm just trying to show you. So there's two little plastic clips, one here, one here, and the tabs on here have got two little notches on either end and it will go just past that, and that's when you know it's fully slotted in. And then you can just push it down, just like that. So then, again, three little, t four little tabs even along the bottom. So we slot those in first, so pushing it all the way towards you, and then you should just be able to push it down. And then what we'll do is we'll close the lid, and that will hopefully hold it in place so we can screw it in. So again, flipping it back over, what we'll do is we'll try and start with this middle one and see if it'll reach. I think it 
well. Let's see if the outer ones will. What you sometimes can't find is that you have to push the keyboard at the same time up from below. So you know, in this case, we're going to have to do that because it's not. So I'll just push that in. Once the first screw's in, then the next ones will go in easy. So there we go, I can feel it bite now so that I know that it's going in. So there we go, and we'll drop that down flat again. Grab our other two screws. And hopefully these should go in no problem at all now. Yeah, so again that one's, I can feel it biting. And then this one here, and again that one's gone in no problem at all. So, let's pop these last three in. And the final one, number three. That one doesn't want to go in. I think it's just the keyboard needs to be pushed at the same time. something stopping it just there so it's a little bit raised so I think I will just take that out for a minute just have another look because it's, it's slightly raised under there which is not right I don't want to force it it's so quick to take these in and out but actually it's no trouble to have another look at it. At the end of the day, you, it's not an expensive part, but you don't want to be doing it hundreds of times and paying for it more than once if you can avoid it. Let's just see if we can see what's going on here. Let's grab something to help me pry under here. It's can't quite get my fingers under. So there are a couple of little clips along the top here. It's weren't clipped in the first time. There were bends or anything, so I don't know why it was just bulging up a little bit. Let's just try sitting that in again and see if it sits down flush. That's just my imagination. It just looks like that number five is slightly raised. That's a slight bend actually on the keyboard. Just bend that back. That's better. Yeah, it's fine. It's just worth checking it out sometimes and just making sure that you are okay. I'll just hold this first time while I put those initial screws back in again and then I'll put it down flat and we'll just do the rest of them. do is I'll give this a good test. Just make sure it's behaving as it's supposed to. Oh, it's not quite biting, but I think it's just because this middle one's not in. And that one's not either. Right, let's push this up from underneath again. Like that. And before we go any further, middle one in. Let's just try this back screw again. Hopefully it'll play this time. Yep. Yeah. Screw those other two in now. Tight still. 
Just give it a push from underneath and just make sure that we have got a good solid seal on it. Okay, we definitely have now. Right. It still does feel slightly raised though, but I think it's just a bend in the keyboard. There we go. That's better. It's definitely not raised anymore. I think it's just where there's I'll show you in a second. This just this little notch here, like all these four along the top, was just not quite lining up with the hole underneath. But it has, with a little bit of a push, it has now gone in, so I think we're okay. Right, so let's get our, let's not get our battery back in, let's get our hard drive cover and things back in place. And this one, let's just that side first. this wired up and uh, then we'll go from there I'll give it a test and hopefully I'll show you the results. Right so this is now up and running I've just got a notepad open on the screen which hopefully you can see um, so previously this middle row of keys was not working and all of them now most definitely are Now that the fact this laptop is lagging for England, it's definitely working absolutely fine. Start button, so that one, yeah, perfect. So there we go. That is how you replace a keyboard, hopefully a little bit quicker than I did, uh, on a Compact Presario CQ56. Um, so it's literally half a dozen screws, um, at five minutes to lift the keyboard out and as long as everything lines up, which mine obviously didn't the first time, then it will take you uh, probably five minutes to put it back in again. It's very quick. As I say, the only thing I'd recommend, just make sure you disconnect the power supply and remove the battery before you actually do it and then you're good to go. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed the video. I'm sorry it's been so long since I posted. I'll try and post something a bit more regularly and uh, yeah, it'll be lovely to catch you in the next video. Thanks for watching.